So way back in 2016, I got the itch to play with WebGL games in the browser. I found the great VoxelJS project, which showed that you could run something very close to Minecraft in Chrome. So I forked the code, hit a lot of limitations, tried to overcome some of them, optimized some things, and ultimately started my own version from scratch about six months later. Because, hey, how hard could it be? And also, well, how fun could it be? And the answer is very. Uh, it ticks all the boxes for me. So this is my version of it. It's called Voxeling. Very original, I know. Um, so that's what you're looking at here. It's been a very fun project. Most of this code is my own, taking inspiration from many other places. Um, like I said, it ticks all the boxes for me. It uh, presents many, many opportunities to really get into the weeds of implementation details as far as how you use WebGL, um, how you design your data structures, how you pass information around, and frankly, just lots of room to optimize code. I've strived for 60 frames per second, and it runs that pretty well on even a 2013 MacBook Air. So the code is JavaScript, not TypeScript, and it uses Node's require module syntax. Um, I bundle the modules together using Browserify, and that allows the front end, all the game code to run, run in Chrome or Firefox. But it's time to modernize. We have ES modules now, or they're, they're becoming more popular, and it will make my life easier and should result in less code, um, fewer shims for the browser. You know, Browserify adds a lot of things that kind of basically ports Node APIs over to the browser so the browser can use them. And I don't really need most of those anymore. So I'm not modernizing just for the sake of modernizing. I also want to resume work on the game because it's been fun. And it's been also a couple years since I've really made modifications to it. Um, I want to convert to ES modules, ditch Browserify, and do another pass to clean things up. So given that I haven't actively worked on the code in a couple years, I kind of needed a good way to reacquaint myself with it. Um, so I sought out some diagramming tools and I will show you one of them. Came across Mermaid. And with Mermaid, you can create diagrams like this. The syntax is here. And um, it allows me to do something like, uh, where to go? Where I can specify all my interconnectedness here, my module interconnectedness here. Pretty simple format. Paste it in. Get a PNG out. So this is the current-ish version of the voxeling code. All the modules that you know are actual dependencies. I haven't quite added in all, all the um, the handles that are passed around. Sometimes the dependency is a little bit softer. You pass it in from, you know, upon instantiation, that sort of thing. But this will allow me to, you know, see where there are opportunities to refactor, reuse stuff, combine, clean things up, just kind of get a get a handle again on how um, things interact. So that has been pretty helpful. Um, lots of things use the GL matrix module, which is great for doing, you know, vectors and quaternions and those sort of things, which are all used in 3D game programming. And the voxel raycast module is awesome. Just want to call out a few things that I know are really cool that have helped me a lot. Raycasting is used when you're in the game, you That's how we choose 
the block immediately in front of you to either create or destroy. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the conversion to ESM. Um, I'll just go ahead and open this full screen here. Client.js is the old version of my code. This was the main entry point for the game in the browser. And as you can see, it uses the require syntax. Here it's using GeoMatrix, some other third-party depths, and then some of, you know, most of my, all my modules that I wrote. But I kind of want to start from scratch and not really start from scratch, but reimagine re what I want the entry point to be but we'll make it um, a bit less daunting, a lot cleaner. Uh, I need to add a lot of decoupling because there's a lot of stuff in here that's really tangled. Like you start the client, which is basically the UI, and then you load the textures. And once those are done loading, then it makes the voxeling instance. <laughs> it, there's a lot of stuff that is cascaded. So that's a perfect opportunity to use promise chaining, which I'm starting to do here. So if you don't know, here's the old style require syntax for requiring a module. So basically this includes the lib slash webgl.js file and puts that class essentially in the webgl variable so you can kind of instantiate, instantiate it that way. This is the newer way to do it in ES modules. You import a named thing from the file. You can import multiple name things, or in this case, config only returns one default item, so I'm importing the default explicitly as config. This is my, my config for the actual game. It defines the, um, the world size, the chunk size, which is at 32 by 32 by 32 set of cubes, and lots of other stuff. And there's the actual textures and how they map onto faces of the cube. So yeah, I'm trying, I'm starting to refactor it into ES modules, and just got a bit of a stub right here. Um, after it imports them and does some instantiation, we're going to start the user interface first. At least that's my um, first idea, first pass for the refactoring job. And then when that's done, we're just going to print it down to the console. Otherwise, we're going to print an error. User interface does a lot of things right now. and I'm, It may end up being split out. It handles key presses, mouse movements, and game controller buttons. And it also starts up WebGL on a canvas in our HTML file. So client MJS, which is the suffix to denote um, ES module JS files. Client includes a couple things. This file, this file, or these dependencies. And we need to bundle them up into, right now, bundle them up into just a single file. Just to help get me started. Um, eventually I'll play around with keeping them as separate files that the browser actually knows about and includes. But for now, I kind of want to keep um, the same workflow that I've had before. So again, I this is, you know, I'm doing things a little bit non-standard, but I'm using the rollup node package, telling it to roll up client 2 and all its dependencies and throw them into bundle.js. In this format, I don't know what it stands for, but it ultimately is a format that the browser understands that is wrapped in a closure so that we don't have any variables leak out. So I iterated through a bunch of issues with this. Um, but so it does build to bundle.js now and let's look at it here so here's the closure here's a tickable which is user interface uh, extends the tickable class tickable is really just provides a, um, a tick method that can be called on every frame of the game so whenever rendering is done each every module that's a tickable will have their tick method called. All right, I digress. So bundle, here we go. 
tickable, and then this actually starts the um, user interface MJS file. Here's the user interface class. And then, since we don't use um, the config data structure anywhere, nothing's referenced it. See, you know, VS Code was actually trying to tell me that by by uh, dimming the text color. Um, since it's not actually used anywhere in here, it's not included in the output bundle, which is very helpful. So ultimately, you only get code that is referenced. Once I do start to use config, it will be it'll show up here. So that's that. Let's uh, see where we get with this thing now. All right. Oh, that's not what I want. I actually have a local um, a caddy running, caddy server running to serve these um, HTML and JavaScript files. Okay, so canvas is not defined in bundle JS 287. Let's see what that looks like. Right. Okay. So here we go. It's possibly not defined in here. How do I view page source? I thought I called it that. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. Need to reference it with this dot canvas. So you know, simple things like that. Constant iteration when you start something like this. That was in user interface and. All right, let's bundle again, and then refresh. All right, WebGL is not defined. So, ah, all right, this was my class, but I actually need to do some other things. Let's see what my class did. I'm not gonna bore you with all this stuff right now, but. Canvas, GL. Yeah, that's not actually where I expected to. Oh, yeah, this is it. So I do need to utilize this class. And this actually starts the WebGL context on the Canvas element. OK, so that's where I need to go next. I just wanted to do a quick show of that, of the game of Mermaid, which is awesome. And show you what my what, <laughs> what some future videos might be about as I go through this and convert more of the code to ESM format, which I've already done a lot of in here. I've done the um, converted the import syntax and then also done the ESM export syntax for exporting these specific data structures and functions and stuff. So I'm on my way. It's now time to continue this loop of refresh page, fix problem, refresh page, fix problem. That way I can hook all the pieces back together and convert the remaining things to ESM and hopefully get the game running soonish. Optimism. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.